Um, our next talk will be from Sarah Hendel, a speaker from the German context, and in particularly, what day is it, like five days, six days before the German election. I think we are all thinking a lot about why are we doing it this way? People are not very satisfied, and I think people are very interested in how to do it differently and better. Um, Sarah is a member of the Federal Executive Board of the organization Mehr Demokratie. Uh, Mehr Demokratie e.V. is an initiative to strengthen the democratic basis in the German political system. And as we were talking about deliberation, one of her focus points lies on randomly allotted citizens' councils. And one of their projects, Bürgerrat Deutschlands Rolle in der Welt, is um, very prominent in Germany because it's a citizens council that actually works with the German parliament on issues of foreign policy and the role that Germany takes in the international community. So uh, thank you for joining us today, Sarah. Um, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me fine. Thank you for the invitation. I will just start um, with a little bit of a description of the state we are in. I think that counts for Germany, but maybe also for yeah, a lot of Western countries right now. So um, I would say uh, very basically um, to have an hypothesis, like because of Brexit, the election of Trump and the style of discourse that we often found, um, unfortunately, on social media, politicians basically lost trust in people. They feel like the people are like, can be going out of control easily and they can make everything happen, even a crazy thing like uh, vote for Trump as a president. So I think really the, the, the election of Trump was kind of a turning point because it turned the system upside down, like because values that counted up to that point, like being honest, being decent, um, not a pussy grabber, being diplomatic and not attacking minorities, um, these were all values that were important for a politician, but at this point, they didn't count anymore. And even worse, Trump profited from being the contrary of all of that. So I think politicians, and we talk a lot to them in our work, we try to uh, really get their um, perspective in. So they feel like um, there is no value basis anymore that counts for all of society. And this actually creates fear and a general distrust towards people and their participation in politics. So we can see that very specifically when it comes to the means of direct democracy, because for many years, I mean, we as a, an organization are active since 40 years to um, probably like the main goal of us was strengthening direct democracy and put it on a federal level. And we saw for many years that the parties were opening up to that idea and were more and more considering to actually do it. But with these uh, turning points that I mentioned before um, that started to go backwards and it culminated in uh, this year's event in the uh, earlier this year, the Green Party, which was founded on the principle of letting the citizens decide more, eliminated the demand of, for direct democracy and di direct democratic initiatives on federal level from their agenda. So that was the, um, yeah, the point where we had to really like see and accept that um, this door is closing, like because of the times we live in, uh, politicians are like backing away from that idea of really sharing power through direct democracy. So in these times, we need an instrument of citizen participation that rebuilds that broken uh, trust. And we uh, found the randomly chosen citizen assemblies that are um, applied widely um, in different countries, but it actually was Ireland who showed us, um, who was a very good example for applying um, these, uh, these instruments to resolve really difficult questions because they applied it on the question of abortion. And uh, as you know, Ireland is a very uh, conservative ca Catholic country. So the topic was actually so hot that politicians didn't dare to actually resolve it because they were afraid of losing so many voters. So they decided that they would give it to a citizen assembly and um, they actually found a, a way, a, a much more liberal way than anybody would think before. And um, as a cherry on top, this decision of the citizen assembly, the new um, regulation for abortion laws was, um, uh, decided upon in a direct democracy referendum, so people actually had the chance to um, 
adapted themselves. But um, back to the instrument itself, because of the randomness of the partic participants, the citizen assemblies bring um, all kinds of voices together at one table. They can bring together young and old people, men and women, people from all educational backgrounds and totally different life situations. So um, they bring also people to the table who would normally not take part in political processes because of any kind of reasons they have. So that's the first step. And in a second step, citizen assemblies make sure the topics are discussed in an informed way. So carefully choose an expert, shed light on the discussed topics from all sides before the small group discussions take place. And then, and this is very important, the setting itself will make people work together. Um, and that is essentially achieved by creating an atmosphere of social security. Um, and that means that everybody feels comfortable enough to speak from their heart. It means that people feel comfortable enough to not feel embarrassed for their own uh, values, for their own experiences, for their own feelings. And this is a, a key to work productively in a team to install this, um, this, this, this social security feeling. And uh, also one main um, part of it is to make sure that everybody in a small group discussions has more or less the same room to voice their, their voice. And that's a really important um, task that, that the moderators have to be assuring that it's achieved. And at the end, the citizen councils um, usually manage to produce a solution that a high numbers of participants supports. So it means um, they produce something which can function as a guideline for politicians to inform their decisions in parliament. And it helps politicians to know what a majority would probably also be um, supporting when, um, when it is discussed in a, in a larger society. So we have up to now executed three citizen assemblies on federal level in Germany now. One of it was already mentioned, it was the one to Germany's role in the world. Um, these citizen assemblies were one-time events um, that were discussing one specific topic. And actually the, the second one, which was the Germany's role on the world um, council uh, assembly, that was actually uh, in, in close cooperation with the Bundestag, our parliament. Like they said that they wanted to be discussed um, that topic and they want to make experiences with that instrument of random citizen assembly. So it was a, a very important project and it went really good. And the politicians were actually really um, excited about this instrument. So um, after these three uh, citizen assemblies, we could also we could we could see three things. First, as different as we all are, and I think that is a big problem in society that we get separated into smaller and smaller groups. Um, so it was different to see that as different as we all are, we are able to find a common ground of values that can use to be built on uh, for commonly supported solutions. So that is the first uh, actually experiences, uh, which was important for people to see. The second thing is normal people in the right setting can make smart contributions to what complex problems, because a lot of people were like fearing that um, the topics on the Bundes level, on the federal level are so complex that maybe normal people wouldn't be able to, to, to make a useful contribution. But that we proved is, is not the case. And the fourth part is, it was really, really intense how people feel, felt about that um, being part of that of that uh, citizen assembly. It made people be part of the solution and made them feel seen and being valued as citizens. And it invoked in them a strong feeling of responsibility and a wish to be more active in the shaping of society. So being in one of these councils really triggered them to feel like a democratic citizen and make them feel that the system needs them, that they have to offer something to the system. And, um, and an additional thing was they actually, um, they grow an understanding of how complex political decisions are. So they actually felt more sympathetic towards politicians after that, because they now felt on their own how difficult it is to, to work towards um, a good aim for society. So I think all these effects are very important for our society right now. So um, the question now is, will we have regular citizen assemblies in Germany on a federal level soon? 
soon. And we have spoken in the run up to the election to over 120 candidates for the elections about um, their uh, opinions on um, citizen assemblies and the feedback was overwhelming positively. I think that's not such a big surprise because actually um, the citizen council don't hurt anybody because they don't take away power from the politicians because the politicians are at the end still free if they actually um, accept or actually um, adopt to the to the to the propositions that the people make. So, um, but still, it was just uh, very obvious that all the politicians also felt that we need some kind like some kind of instrument which is actually um helping with all that issues i just said before and they considered the citizen assemblies the random issues and citizen assemblies a good way to go forward right now so we really have good hopes that they will be implemented and that we can use them soon on a regular basis but i also have to say that that can only be the next steps um i feel if politicians deal sensibly with the outcomes of the citizen assemblies we hope that some of the broken trust can be renewed and we really hope that then more advanced processes of political participation become an option again. And there I don't mean only direct democracy initiatives. I, I think that citizen assemblies in a nutshell show us what we have to achieve in the longer run for the whole society. We first have to enhance the content quality of social democratic debate and we have to create processes that bring people together instead of dividing them. And I think for this next phase, we should have we should already prepare now because maybe it comes quicker than we now it now feels. And I really uh, can recommend to look to uh, Taiwan as an example because Taiwan is a country which is very um, very advanced in using digitally supported methods to organize large scale processes of co-creation to found to find solutions based on the real needs and values of people. And digitally assisted citizen participation allows us to harness the resources and capacities of a decentralized liberal democracy on a totally new level and speed and to actually achieve that the state itself has to install a digital social infrastructure that has the power to elevate democracy into the next level and i'd be happy um to um maybe um go a little bit deeper um when we have a question to that but um i leave it to that for now um that taiwan is a really impressive example of how digital democracy can be used towards um creating unity and creating more creative solutions for our problems and i will leave it with that thank you